Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Land warfare hinged upon crossing, destroying, or capturing bridges for hundreds of years. Whether crossing rivers, valleys, or depressions in the land, an attacking force will always be vulnerable. From a defensive standpoint, bridges are crucial to keeping supplies moving to the front line. For decades now, militaries worldwide have been able to construct portable bridges of all kinds and lengths. These not only allow them to traverse obstacles without putting themselves at risk, but to ensure enemies cannot take advantage of the bridge in their absence. Though military engineers have explored many different designs, one of the most successful is the Joint Assault Bridge, or JAB. The JAB is a tank-like vehicle that is a modification of an Abrams M1A1 battle tank. With the exception of a turret missing on the JAB. However, rather than being used for offensive purposes, this tank's job is to provide deployable bridge capabilities to units engaged in a wide range of military operations. The JAB and its armored carrier are uniquely designed so that the bridge can be deployed, allowing troops and vehicles to cross over as many times as needed. The M1074 can then cross the bridge itself, pick it up, and then continue moving forward with the rest of the company. The entire process takes about six minutes. The bridge itself is capable of crossing gaps of over 50 feet and can support even the heaviest military vehicles. The M1074's tank design means it can go virtually anywhere ground troops can. There are a number of situations in which troops might encounter a gap wider than 50 feet. For this reason, militaries have developed the ability to carry and deploy segmented girder bridges. Even with the help of dozens of soldiers and machines, this process takes much longer than deploying with a jab. A bridge master will oversee the construction. With one team holding the bridge over the gap, and another slowly adding pieces to the other side. Once complete, the bridge's own weight will hold it in place while troops and vehicles cross. The best aspect of a girder bridge is the added stability, which helps prevent accidents and allows for faster crossings. Unfortunately, this means it cannot be disassembled and carried forward as easily as the jab. Deploying bridges over water and deploying bridges on the water are similar problems that require very different solutions.
a U.S.-based company called Burden recently developed a series of specialized bridge erection boats that the Army designated the M-30. These boats can be carried and deployed by specialized trucks. then immediately get to work assembling sections of portable floating bridges across the designated body of water. These floating sections are designed to be self-interlocking. This greatly minimizes the amount of time it takes to create a rigid structure. The completed bridge is also incredibly durable, thanks to the unique, buoyant design of each section. It's difficult to overstate just how important these floating ribbon bridge systems are. First designed during World War II, they have played a role in some of the largest military operations in history. Again, it takes a significant amount of coordination between boat pilots and ground troops to keep the operation moving quickly and efficiently. In some cases, the sections of the road will not be able to be deployed in the same area as the crossing. This means that the boats must drive each section and a team of men and women up the river in potentially hazardous conditions. Once fully deployed and secured, a ribbon bridge can support operations for weeks or months at a time. Thanks to their revolutionary design, they are capable of supporting tens of thousands of pounds at a time. This allows tanks, armored vehicles, and other heavy machinery to cross safely without interference. In some cases, the sections of the bridge will not be used as a road, but as a boat. This is ideal when a force needs to move across a lake or other wide body of water. The engineers will design a short section of road big enough to hold several vehicles at once. A tank will then be directed onto the floating sections, and a boat will either tow or push it across the water's surface. Upon arriving at the other side, the tank only needs to drive off and continue on its way. As a multinational organization, NATO is able to pull the very best technology from a wide variety of militaries. One such example is the M3 amphibious rig. Which was first developed in Germany and then acquired by General Dynamics. This unique vehicle is able to travel on roads using four wheels. But it also has large aluminum pontoons that allow for buoyancy in water.
Once in the water, the vehicle can separate, releasing a series of ramps on both sides. Vehicles like tanks and trucks can then drive atop them, which will then transport them across the body of water before coming back ashore. One of the things that really separates the M3 from other bridging vehicles is its speed. Not only is it capable of reaching 50 miles per hour on the open road, but it can also move nearly 10 miles per hour in water. It also has the ability to turn rapidly, which can help it avoid obstacles in the water. Currently, the M3 is in service with nine countries. In situations where the number of M3 units cannot fully traverse the water, the joined M3s can move back and forth in tandem, carrying multiple tanks at once to speed up the process. Though the final result functions in much the same way as a pontoon bridge, the M3 system is far faster. It takes time to guide all of the pontoon sections into place, secure them to one another, and secure them to the shoreline. The M3 allows for crossings in a fraction of time. and does not leave behind a bridge that could be used by the enemy. In South Korea, the 74th Multi-Role Bridging Company worked with a squadron of Chinook helicopters and boats. To create a massive tank bridge across the Imjin River. This is the seventh largest river in the country, averaging 200 feet wide in most areas. It also has a reputation for fast moving currents, particularly in the rainy season. Using pontoon sections, the 74th was able to bridge the gap between the two shorelines very quickly. First, they created a bridge section slightly downriver from the final site by tethering one of the fast boats to the side of the bridge. The team was able to start ferrying tanks from one side of the engine to the other, with each trip taking just a few minutes. While this was being done, other teams continued to construct sections of the bridge at the original site. Using the completed pontoons as a ferry, the 74th could waste no time getting their tanks safely to the other side. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.